Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kimberly Kirkland with the UAB Institute for Arts and Medicine, and we're so pleased to be co-presenting this Lunch and Learn um, with Art Play. As a reminder, please uh, pose any questions that you may have for Dr. Pineda in the chat box at the bottom of your screen, and uh, we will make sure to get to those uh, at the end of the presentation. Um, I believe people who are passionate about both science and the arts can bring extraordinary innovation to our world. And today you will hear a wonderful example of that. We're really honored to have with us Dr. Luis Pineda, who is a board certified physician with training and experience in hematology, oncology, internal medicine, psychiatry and neurology, and pain management. He's practiced in the Birmingham area for over 25 years. He also has a master's in science and health administration, and he is a professionally trained chef. He's also the founder of Cooking with Cancer, a nonprofit organization dedicated to improving the quality of life um, for uh, people in treatment uh, with cancer through food. And he's going to tell us how he brings together his two passions to improve the healing and quality of life for people undergoing treatment for cancer. He's also going to share with us how to use creative cuisine and spices to enhance our overall health and well-being. And I also want to share that I've had the great pleasure of collaborating with his daughter, Elena, who shares his passion for the culinary arts, healthcare, and improving the lives of people with cancer through her work with uh, Forge Breast Cancer Survivor Center and Cooking with Cancer. So without further ado, I will turn the program over to Dr. Pineda. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Kirkland. I, uh, I haven't had this kind of introduction for a long time, so thank you very much. Um, and thank you for everybody that is joining this, uh, this uh, meeting. And I thank you as well to all the people who are helping to put it together. Uh, I am a totally naive person when it comes to computers, so I have a lot of support by the technical people. So thank you very much, okay? So let, let me give you some sense as to what I have in my mind. Um, when I was approached about this, I didn't quite have the sense as to why my cooking has to do with art, UAB, and the uh, the Alice Stevens Center. Um, but then, you know, I realized how naive I am because I, now I realize that, yes, cooking is an art. And not only that, but uh, it allows creativity. Um, and I think that after all, I think that we have done that with cooking with cancer. Um, I will show you, however, uh, not so much the art of this, although I would try, but I want to dedicate some time to tell you that cooking is as well a science. It is a combination of products that have a chemistry to it. They have an electricity to it. And they have in humans an effect that comes into the sense of pleasures as well as potentially significant benefit and inappropriately used significant negative in human behavior and human life. So the way I have organized this is that um, I have this PowerPoint presentation, and you will see that in the PowerPoint, I have three important things. One is the presentation itself. The second is you will see some pictures that relate to the place where I was born. This is Guatemala in Central America. And the second, the third thing will be that I will show you a collection of art that has been collected for cooking with cancer 
that is part of our collection of things. So the first thing I will show you is the first one slide is actually Guatemala. It's a lake called Lake Atitlan, beautiful place that is surrounded by volcanoes. Let's go to the next slide, please. So next is one of the reasons why I'm here. And that is, interestingly enough, a jalapeno pepper. And this is a jalapeno pepper soup. And it's a beauty in itself. It's a beautiful creation and a beautiful combination of science. And I, I will go back into this, but I just wanted to give you the introduction to this one. Next slide, please. All right, so just happened that I am indeed a medical doctor. I am practicing hematology and oncology. I uh, do uh, uh, have a relationship with UAV through the Cooper Green Clinic, where I am the medical director of the hematology and oncology clinic. And I do have a senior consultant relationship with two other private hospitals in town. Um, I basically have seen the people with cancer suffering. I don't like that. I want to improve the quality of their life. So one time I decided that I was going to go to then Culinar, which eventually disappeared, but it was the cooking arm of Virginia College. And I remember going over the weekends for two years and spending my time cooking and cleaning the floors and washing the dishes and everything. And eventually I became an executive chef. I think the culinary showed me the techniques of things, but I think that the actual creativity comes more so from medicine and from the interest of making quality of life better for people who are suffering. So we have this Cooking with Cancer, which mission is the helping those afflicted with cancer to have better quality of life through good food. And I eventually will show you at the end of this, there is a second book that we are working on in which we are realizing that not only we care for the people who is already sick, but we are deeply caring for the people to prevent them from getting sick. So next slide, please. All right, now we will go into things that are spicy and things that are not spicy, but this particular one is a, another beautiful creation uh, because basically this is a um, pumpkin dessert that is made with a sugar called allulose. And allulose is considered a rare sugar, but it basically a small molecule sugar that because of the size of it does not get absorbed. So you can eat whatever you want amount of it that it doesn't change your blood sugars. And I'm saying that because sugars in itself is critical for the metabolism of the cells and the development of cancer. And eventually one time I will have the opportunity to show you how that go directly into cancer in humans. Uh, we think that we have an obesity problem in the United States that is creating an insulin resistant abnormality with blood sugars and higher incidence of cancer coming up pretty soon. So even look at the beauty of the picture. I mean, this is absolutely gorgeous uh, uh, because it gives you color, very attractive, and at the same time, it's providing you with a healthy way of enjoying a dessert. Next, please. All right, now, traditional concept. Whenever you cook, whenever you are a cook, whenever you are a chef, you think in terms of these slides, and you say, well, they tell me that there are five different flavor things or receptors, and they relate to each other, and then they stimulate each other, some being better between and some negative in the relationship. So 
we guide that into how you're going to put together a given dish. Just happened then, next slide please, that the idea will be that we have this tongue that has these tiny little elements right there that we call papillae and that, next slide please, each one of them have these taste buds. And these taste buds, as you can see, basically they are cells that are conglomerated together and they get exposed to whatever you are eating so that in essence you can taste what you are eating. I will show you that it's more complicated than that and that that provides more armament to create even better food. Next slide, please. So the first message that I want to leave you with is that this is a tasting bud. This is a tasting cell. And this particular one is related to the salty one. But what I want you to see is that the cell has little holes on the sides and these are channels. And in these channels, there are going in some molecules, in this case salt, and going out something called potassium, which are electrolytes. And electrolytes basically are called electrolytes because they are electrical. And what happened with this is that they create a gradient of electricity at the level of the receptor. And every time you taste, then you allow the exchange of this electricity back and forth, and that's what produces the stimulation of the receptor, which in terms transfer the electricity to the bottom of the cell. And in that bottom of the cell, you will see how there are these little vesicles that on the basis of a chemical called neurotransmitters, will transfer this electricity to the nerve that will go into the brain. Now, I know that I'm getting complicated with this, but the first message that I want to give you is that there is an opportunity by knowing that there are those receptors, by using culinary manipulation that makes the taste to be better. And the point that I'm making to you is that pungency, which is seen in a lot of spices, makes these receptors to continue to fire more often. Next slide, please. Now, then it go, the information goes to the brain, and then I will go to the brain, because the brain will be a very critical point to this. Next slide, please. Now, what happened with this is, you have in this slide what happened, if you have the receptor that is charged, and then you put it to something that you're tasting, there is a discharge, and that's the first wave. And then that's when you taste something. You say, oh, this is salty, this is sweet, okay? And then there is a remaining feeling about it until you come to the point in which it no longer reacts. And that is when the receptor has discharged itself and no longer is responsive and enter into a refractory time. Next slide, please. And this is what happened with this. If I eat too fast, then on the upper part of the slide, you will see that the, main, the reaction of my receptor immediately is very small, very minimal. But if I allow time in between, just get back to the bottom in which eventually I get another response again. And that is a economic concept that is called the diminishing return. And let me give you a point. If you have an ice cream in your hand and you take the first lick of the ice cream, that is going to be the most delicious thing that you ever taste. But if you keep on licking that ice cream repeatedly too fast, you no longer taste it. So when my son eats a steak, 
and he swallows it in one second. He didn't taste it. He just swallowed it, right? So whenever you are tasting your wine, the first sip of your wine feels like the moon in the middle of the spring, right? But then the second one, if you are not allowing enough time or some bread to cleanse in the receptor and recharge it again, you don't taste it. You no longer are able to perceive all details of the things. So those are basic concepts that tell you that if you really want to enjoy your food, number one, you have to allow time in between each one of the bites. Number two, is that you want to allow or increase or enhance the electrical activity of the receptors. And you do that on the basis of the pungency in this case, or in the basis of the variety of the food that you're putting together. Because the more different the taste, the more different receptors that you will taste with it. I hope I'm making sense, right? Now, next slide, please. This is collection of art. This is a Mayan culture. This is an acrylic picture that depicts a mother aristocratic in the Mayan culture, judged by the dressing with a little baby. Beautiful thing. Next slide, please. Now, this is another point that I will make to you. One of the receptors that is not recognized, and this is a cultural reason why that happens, is the glutamate receptor. Now, go back again to the glutamate receptor, please, my dear. Okay. Glutamate receptor is critically important because on the right-hand side, you see what happened when you add glutamate to your food. And you remember that there was such a thing called monosodium glutamate, which is something that is a salt substitute and that is very commonly used in Chinese and Japanese restaurants. And you don't know it, but it's enhancing the flavor of it. And that's the reason why you keep on eating and eating and eating on it, okay? It just happened that has an additional benefit because the concentration of salt is lesser compared with the normal salt that you use in cooking, creating a benefit of health by reducing the incidence of hypertension. Having said that, you will hear me later why I consider the glutamate so important and why you will find in cooking with cancer recipes that go into that particular point. Next, please. Now, this is another recipe of cooking with cancer. And you can see that it has peppers on it, okay? Now, so I was trying by doing this to keep my receptors recharged. Now, let me tell you why it's so beautiful on this. Because this is a watermelon soup. And you will say, I don't see the redness on it, right? And I did it intentionally because you know that you recognize a lot of times flavors on the basis of different things. You can see the peps, you can see the color, you can see the rim of the outside, you can smell it, you can do all these things. But in here, I took the color away from you. And the point is that by doing this, I was able to get people to recognize that this was indeed a watermelon, but it happened because the receptor was enhanced on the basis of the paper, or the pepper, I'm sorry, okay? I hope I'm making sense. I hope that I'm not getting you lost with this. All right, next, please. All right, the smell, it happened the same way. It does look like, very respectfully, God must have been an electrician because he made everything to behave on the basis of the exchange of electrodes from one side to the other. Even the muscles of yours move on the basis of the electric activity of the muscles. Your heart functions on the basis of the exchange of electrolytes from the inside to the outside of the muscles. Next, please. 
So here you have, you have your smelling something, you have the receptors. These receptors will allow the electrolyzed cold sodium to go inside of the cells that is stimulate the neurotransmitter. Next slide, please. And then that goes again to the brain and I go back into the brain again. Next slide, please. And voila, the same situation. I need to allow for those receptors to be recharged because if I don't and I am smelling, then I smell less if I do it too fast, okay? And that is critical with the smell because a smell is more important than the taste that you get from your mouth, right? Next slide, please. Now, look at this thing. And, and, and you can see that obviously I was not quite beauty-like the way I presented this. And this was the early parts of cooking with cancer. But I took actually a spring onions. And out of the spring onions, I made an ice cream. And you see the ice cream. And then I took garlic. And out of the garlic, I made a trumpet to it. And then I put it together. So I was, in essence, not only given a different flavor, but I was stimulating the recharging of the taste receptors to it. Again, very, very interesting concept. I, I still remember one time somebody said, God, what are you doing? This is horrible. Well, not so much when you think in terms of what you are pretending to do with this. Now, next slide, please. Now, this is another concept that is important. And you have heard now with this COVID-19 problem that we are having, whenever you get infected, the infection typically happens to be primarily located to the nose to begin with. And the symptom that is more prominent to this is the fact that these people don't smell and don't taste. When you have the flu, you don't smell and you don't taste. And the reason for that is because the smell is more important than the taste bud in your mouth. But the way you smell is not by smelling it from the front. You smell it by smelling it from the back. Because when you mix the taste or the particles that you are eating with the saliva, they get little serum, they call, and they penetrate your nose from the back to the front. And that's the way you mostly taste on it, okay? So, so far, guys, you know, electricity is important, time is important, you need to have good nose, and you need to give the time for this to happen. So, so far, I'll give you some ideas where I have in my brain. So, next, please. Now, this is another early beauty, and this early beauty has a green iced tea. And it's no sugar attached to it, with the exception that I fried a slice of mango to it. So I was given the difference in the tasting at the same time. And in this case, I made it an ice cream just because in particular cancer patients who develop troubles with inflammation of the inside of their mouth, they have troubles with hot products and the coldness helped them to tolerate it better. Next slide, please. Now, this is another thing that creates an important point as to how chefs should look into this. This is your brain. And then there are three important points that I will make to you. And in the bottom of the slide, you will see dopamine, GABA and glutamate, okay? And these are the neurotransmitters. And these three areas of the brain are the ones that will tell you why that is important. The first one is the ventral tegmental area, which is right in the very bottom center of the brain. 
And that is a dopamine-associated receptor. And that is the one that gets damaged by people who have Parkinson's disease. And you talk to people with Parkinson's disease and they cannot enjoy their food. And the reason for that is this is because this is the gratification center. This is where you say, I'm hungry. What you say, I can care less about food. But it's not the tasting point, but it's the one that makes you sick the food. And that is an important point because now we know on the basis of what happened to people with Parkinson, that I can actually use an enhancer of the dopamine, which are medications that can be used for this, and I can make people with cancer eat more whenever they are not eating. So I gratify the need for food, even though I am not gratifying the tasting thing. Okay? Now, that's one part. So again, look at the beauty of this. I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous because then that dopamine associated point returns to the frontal cortex and that goes through these so-called GABA receptors, which are gamma amine butyric acid. I'm trying to impress you with the way I talk, okay? But the point about it is that that is the receptors that we call the opioid receptor. And that, guys, is what makes you say, ah, I like this, okay? So that's the reason why in medicine today, we stimulate the appetite of people by stimulating the pleasure part of this by using, interestingly enough, THC, which is a derivative of marijuana, or people are using the BHC, which again, we use it medically to stimulate that. And that's the reason why now you see on television with the explosion of these places where they sell you these products that people are cooking with it. And as a matter of fact, they stimulate the pleasure that you get out of food. Now, I'm not telling you to do it, okay? I'm not inviting you to go ahead and start cooking with this and doing these things, but I just want you to know how this is so critically important to the process of eating and enjoying your food, okay? And that's something the chef can use to do this. Now, third point, and this is another critical point. You see the orange color. And the orange color is the glutamate, the same glutamate that you ate before with the sodium glutamate. It goes into the brain. And when that does, together with another electrolyte, here goes again, that's called calcium, it kind of enhances the communication in between the cells that now we call memory. And that creates what you will call comfort food. So you can see all these beautiful things, the reason why you remember that particular pancake that your mother used to do, that in your culture is so great, but maybe you go to uh, China and China does something different and India does something totally different is again a creation of the culture based upon memory creation that is related to the utilization of glutamate by the brain. So that is absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? I mean, if you are a chef and you think in all these things, you can come up with all these absolutely gorgeous recipes that are no longer just, you eat this because it's good for you you are creating a culture and food, right? <clears throat> Next, please. And, and that is just to show you how that exists in the brain and where that is located. Next, please. All right, another piece of art. 
Guatemala is very peculiar in the way the native dress. You can recognize people coming from a given location in the country on the basis of the way they dress. It's kind of like you were to have people from Clanton wearing the same sweater or people from Shelby County having the same shoes. These people dress exactly alike. So you can recognize that these guys are coming from a place called Solola. And you can see the beauty of the textiles and everything. And this is another acrylic painting that belongs to the collection of Cooking with Cancer. Next, please. Another part of what you will call cooking with cancer without necessarily being on a spice. And this is black beans. And this is black bean made in a ice cream that is salty, savored, it's not sweet. But the whole point about this is that it contains tremendous amount of fiber. And fiber is what we now call prebiotic. And what happened with this, believe it or not, is that we are full of microbials inside of us. They call it microbiome. And this microbiome is critical not only because it helps you to digest the food that you have by being in your intestine, but actually communicate information to the immunity. So the outside go to the inside, communicate information from the outside to your inside so that your immunity is ready for whatever is gonna happen next. So the fiber feeds the good bacteria in your system, the so-called probiotics. So you can see where cooking with cancer Yes, we utilize spices for the purposes of stimulating the appetite, but we can use all this information to make you healthier. Okay, next, next, please. Now, this is another one that is interesting. I, I made this about a couple of years ago, uh, but we just have uh, Thanksgiving, and it just happened that pumpkin becomes a very important issue with the Halloween and all these type of things. And it just happened that pumpkins is as well rich in fiber. And you can see then in the inside how the strain of this is. And these give you significant amount of probiotic as well, prebiotic activity. Next, please. So once you know the electricity of your receptors, you know how timing is important to it, how the brain utilizes this information, how you have the sense of hunger, how you have the sense of pleasure, and how you are creating a memory of it. You become this guy, right? So Walt Disney created Remy, right? And Remy becomes this beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, pleasure of mind and pleasure of food in which the guy lives in the pleasure of cheeses, creating things that people don't know. But in the movie, if you remember, in the movie, the critic was there unhappy, but this guy did what we are trying to do. And basically what he did is that he created a ratatouille that develop and make him remember basically the comfort food comes. So you can see how this all related to the way you eat and the way you enjoy the food. Next, please. So this is another concept of cooking with cancer. I am utilizing here all this concept because I am using all kind of vegetables. They all contain the fiber that I want to give for the prebiotic activity. They give me a very attractive color to it. And they have these tiny little 
brown dot that you see on the gelatin part, which is peppers. So I'm stimulating in many ways the taste receptors, and I am at the same time entering through the eye, and I am basically stimulating the brain to enjoy it. Next, please. And then I have these spices things. And this is actually a volcano near Guatemala City that is called Fuego, which is translation for fire, which is constantly erupting, right? So it's kind of like an eruption, so many things. So next comes, next slide, please. This little fella. And I'm so proud of this because this little fellow, basically the pepper contains a neurotransmitter that is called capsaicin. Capsaicin is what gives you the pungency on the pepper. Just happen that selectively this acts on something that is called a neurotransmitter that goes into the brain that is called Substance P, P like in Peter. And Substance P has a lot to do with the perception of pain as well as the perception of nausea, okay? So, just happened that people with cancer have nausea related to chemotherapy. As a matter of fact, we use nausea medicines that block the substance P. With this, which costs about five pennies to do, you know, I can do exactly the same. Control the nausea and the pain coming from the mucositis and the nausea related to chemotherapy in people with cancer. It just happened to be delicious as well, you know, because I'm stimulating my receptors as well. The other beautiful part out of this is that you can control the pungency of it. You know, many people tell me, oh God, you're putting a big piece of chunk of pepper in this thing, I cannot tolerate this. Well, it just happened that the actual soup contained dairy products. And dairy product is the modifier of the perception of pungency. So, I have a patient of mine who cannot tolerate the pungency. I put a little bit more of the milk in it. Or somebody who is a slow taster, I can put lesser of the, of the milk in there and make it more acceptable to the palate of whoever is trying to. This is another beautiful, I mean, this is just as great. This is a, a thoughtful dish with a lot of meaning, a lot of creativity to it. Next, please. Another beautiful thing. Look at this spell. Believe it or not, this is olive oil. And you see, olive oil. God, what are you doing? How did you do that? Well, if I make an incorporation of air into the olive oil, if I just shake it to death, it will incorporate air. And I will put a little bit of yellow into this and I put it in the refrigerator and form these blocks. Now, you will say, well, why is so important that? Well, two reasons. Number one, olive oil is the most important part on the Mediterranean diet. And that basically helps to control the metabolism of cholesterol. The second major reason is that people with cancer Whenever they are taking pain medication, they begin, begin to be constipated. And by using the olive oil, I am able to lubricate the intestinal function and they can go to the bathroom better. Another beautiful thing, isn't it? I mean, this is just gorgeous. So, next, please. Another one that is a beautiful thought process. This is just a yellow, and I just happened that I put a I, you know, this was uh, um, basil, and, and you know, it's very simple. But what happened with this is that people 
with cancers of the head and neck. Eventually, they cannot produce enough saliva. And they will tell you, I chew the food and I chew the food and it becomes larger in my mouth. So what we did is that we added into, dissolve into the yellow enough amount of salt. And the salt has an osmotic value to it so that pulls whatever is left of that saliva out into the mouth. And that mixes with the food and makes them easier to swallow and eat. Next, please. Another beautiful thing. This is plain simple beets, right? And they, 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 but you will notice that at the very end of the slide, there is a blue cheese. And blue cheese, believe it or not, is full of these guys that are called fungi and bacteria. And they are probiotics. And they are, again, the stimulant of the immune system beyond the fact that it has a very significant taste in your mouth. So it has a therapeutic value as well as has a tasting value to it. Okay. Next slide, please. Now, I think this, this graduates. I call it Ruby Cube. And it's indeed a Ruby Cube. And you can see that it's basically fruit cut in squares, right? It just happened that I bathed it in gelatin, and the gelatin is a protein, right? And added to that, I put something that is called a meat glue that very likely you have heard about. And then when I put it together, the meat glue melt the gelatin and put it together and glue it together. So I can pick this fellow up and I can take it in my hands and I can play with it that it's not gonna come apart, but it's still fruit. And I can bite on it and I can still feel and taste the watermelon, all the elements of this. So I am actually playing with you and playing with the presentation to give you something that otherwise you wouldn't do. Because even the beauty of this is that the gelatin part has two phases of it. One is the protein phase that is water soluble. And in between the strands forms a syncytium, meaning to say a lot of little holes in between the protein that accept lipid components. So I have somebody who doesn't want to take medicine and doesn't want to eat. I can actually put medicines that are water soluble and medicines that are lipid soluble together and they can eat it without knowing that they are eating in it. I mean, this is a superly, absolutely gorgeous, intelligent little thing. Um, it does take some work to put it together, but, you know, you show it to my patients and they don't know what is in there. I have used this to put, say, for example, vitamin D in the lipid soluble, and I can put aspirin or interestingly enough, a medication called metformin, which is a diabetic medication, but it just happened to have an anti-cancer effect. So it is water soluble so that I can use it that way. Absolutely outstanding. Next, please. So at the end of the day, we came up with this book which is a very primitive book. It has been on for about maybe 10 years. Uh, we give it to people with cancer for free. 
nobody has to pay for it. And it's in a hard copy form, which we mail to whoever requested, or is in an electronic form in the website, and they can do it. And we even invite people to add or subtract things from it. It doesn't have all the recipes. We are coming up with another one. Next, next slide, please. And this is going to be the way it's going to look like. It's going to be called Prescription for Taste 2. And then now it's different because it's a book for cancer patients and those who want to stay healthy. Because at the end of the day, not only we want to help our people with cancer, but we want to change the culture. We want to make a culture that is healthier without having to be said, you need to eat your veggies. We need to change the way people eat to be more proactive because the majority of the medical illnesses in the United States are related to the behavioral aspect of the culture. Next, please. This is another one of these paintings. This is an oil painting. Now, I think I have one of my daughters online looking at this, and I'm not gonna say her name, but really I tell you, when I bought this picture, I thought of her. Uh, it is just her. Yeah. Now she has changed, she's older, but, but it's part of it. And it's part of the collection of cooking with cancer. Next, please. Now, we are getting close to the end of this. Um, just a couple of places that I want for you guys to have present. This is actually Harvard University, and they have this Healthy Kitchen website. They are in the proactive part, just like I do. And I will suggest to you that if this has excited your interest, that will be a good place to go. Next slide, please. The second one is this one. And this is the Institute of Medicine. And as you know, basically this is a governmental place where experts in the matters advises the government as to policies that should be advised to people. In there you will find microbiome, you will find obesity, you will find diabetes, you will find cancer, you will find all these elements that we think in the craziness of ours, which I don't think that we are that crazy. I think that, that we are outside of the box looking for the benefit and health of people. And you people can explore that. You can download books without having to pay anything, and that will give you the information you want. Next, please. This is a granita made of blueberries, no sugar added. Next, please. This is a cream brulee. It's a cream brulee made with curcumins. And as you know, curcumins is being made the glory, and I think it's true, it's a very significant anti-inflammatory. And it's very likely coming next to be a significant anti-cancer element to it. Next dictation, please. I mean, next, I'm sorry, next, next slide. This is another beautiful thing. This, this is something that you can get in the Southern United States. And look at how it looks so nice. Uh, it's just tomatoes and cornichon, and they are melted together in this texturally light product that, next slide please. When, oh, okay, this is, I'm sorry, this is Guatemala and the same volcano resting. Yeah once in a while. And next slide is this presentation of this particular terrain. And you can actually get through the eyes of people 
but presenting things the way we do, which is a significant part of cooking. Next, please. I know that we are very close to the end of this, and we may not have enough time for questions and answers, but I just want to give you this because I don't mind and I encourage if anything, anybody is ignited by this, if he has ideas, if he has questions, you can actually send it to me through either the Luisa Pineda MDPC or the Cooking with Cancer, and I'd be happy to respond to whatever question you may have to it. I certainly appreciate the opportunity to talk to you all, the passion that you have with me, my craziness. So whatever time we have, I'd be happy to help whatever we do. Thank you so much, Dr. Pineda. This was absolutely fascinating, um, really interesting. We have uh, a question from Nancy Hicks that asks, um, she's interested in the in allulose and wonders where she can um, get purchase allulose. Right. The way I normally do is that I actually go to the internet mm -hmm. and there are places you just dial allulose Amazon has it. Um, it is a little bit more expensive than the regular sugar uh, because it's more difficult to manufacture it. Uh, but but you can buy it, and, and we, uh, you know, I, I won't say the price, but uh, it will be a, maybe twice or three times as expensive as the regular fructose that is the one that you buy whenever you have the cane sugar, but they come from the same place. And the point that I will make about the allulose is that allulose not only tastes the same, does not affect your insulin and your blood sugars, but behaves in cooking matters the same way as a regular sugar does. And I'm making that point because I have tried to use, say for example, uh, the sugar substitute. And, and try to do some baking with it. And, and it doesn't work the same way because the strand of the caramel that forms is not the same. But this kind of sugar behave the same, so your, your cake, it will rise likewise. So it makes sense to use it for culinary purposes. Thank you. That's great. I was going to ask if you can use it the same way as sugar. Um, I also was curious about MSG. You spoke about um, about MSG, and I always remember hearing that MSG was something that we wanted to avoid. So is that incorrect? Absolutely. And, and that's what I meant to say when I say that culturally was not admissible anymore. And what happened with that is that it was thought, number one, that it will favor obesity. And it was blamed by, you know, for the cause of obesity because people was eating more. And that is true. So you have to control that. And the second thing was that there was thought about allergy and migraine. So they were saying that people were developing headaches related to the use of this. Eventually, there have been multiple studies that basically have documented that it's not MSG, the one that causes that problem. And the current thought in the people that deal with migraines and people who deal with all these things is no longer the headaches as much as it is that they don't want for people to use too much fear that whenever you stimulate the memory centers, that center that I'm telling you where the memory is located at, it may actually overwhelm the cells there because the, the nerve cell, the neuron, begins to manufacture too many communication points. The neurons have dendrites, which are the little electrical connectors, and these connect to each one another and then it jumps to the next one, and it jumps to the next one, and then end up being a neuron that has not just one axon, but it has 20 of them. So it needs to be used wisely. As a matter of fact, you don't find MSG that easy. Uh, 
And you, whenever you use it, you have to use it. There are recommendations in terms of the percentage that you can use on the basis of the amount of production that you have. But for anybody who is interested on that, you know, again, Amazon has it. And there is a, a spice place that is even here in Birmingham. It's called Pensy that you can go there and then you can find, and not only the MSG, but you can find all these crazy peppers and all these things that I'm using with this. And, and you know, you can experiment your own and see how it happens to it. Thank you. We have one minute left. Um, and I wanted to, there was a question that came in about how can we incorporate turmeric? Um, I guess the question is, how can we incorporate turmeric in our, our cooking and our cuisine? you have any thoughts about turmeric? Yes, yes. And, and, and that's what the curcumin is, right? Uh, the turmeric is, is the, the actual, the root, and the curcumin is, is basically the, the powder of it. Um, it is, if you remember... Uh, mostly used in the Indian cuisine, and you can actually smell it and see it. You know, it's a, um, you can incorporate it in your diet, um, and you can actually buy it uh, in, you know, everywhere. You can go to any supermarket in town and you can find it, and you can find it in the actual fruit of it. Um, you can use it to taste. The problem with using more than just taste, if you are looking for the anti-inflammatory effect, is the absorption. Because then the larger the piece of the turmeric, the lesser the likelihood that you will absorb it. If you are looking for the absorption of it, then you will have to use what they call nanometric cut. A nanometric cut implies the fact that somebody has milled it and has milled it to the level that is millimeters and lesser than the millimeter inside of the molecule. And that is absorbable. And again, that is something that you can get in Amazon or scientific places like uh, Thompson Scientific and things like that. They will have it available to you and you buy it and you can use it that way. Sorry. Well, thank you so much. I know if anyone has any other questions, um, Dr. Pineda is very kind to share with us uh, his contact uh, information, as you saw earlier. And um, But thank you so much, Dr. Pineda. This was really fascinating, so educational. I can see in the chat, everybody has really um, enjoyed this, this talk. So thank you so much for your time. And thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thank you.